my name is Hannah. I am one of the um, prospective student advisors at the Fremantle campus, but we are very lucky today to have um, Dr. Anne Coffey and Dr. Sean Kearney, who um, Anne is from the Fremantle campus, Sean is from the Sydney campus. So they are going to be taking us through today, um, but I'll let them say hello. <laughs> Uh, well, hi, look, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon and um, congratulations on being interested in coming into the teaching profession. Hopefully um, today you can leave with lots of information and, and, and make a really considered decision about a, a potential career move into what I think is the best, best job going around. Yeah, welcome to you all. Um, just, um, yeah, um, <clears throat> I guess this presentation should hopefully answer some questions, please feel free to use the chat or to um, either Anne, myself or Hannah, if it's a general question. And um, yeah, welcome. So let's start off. Um, we've got some bios for Anne and Sean here. Um, Notre Dame obviously puts an emphasis on having great academics who have experience both in practical areas and also in theory. So um, this is who you're talking with today. So you're probably doing a bit of research at the moment about um, your options around the place. So Notre Dame University does really well in the quality indicators of learning and teaching. I'm not sure if you've seen this um, resource or had a look at these survey results before, but once students graduate, they're asked to share their experiences. And so um, these are the results that have come out in the, the 2020 um, Good Universities Guide. So Notre Dame is currently performing as number one in Australia in learner engagement, skills development, student support and teaching quality. And so you'll find, we'll talk a little bit more about, um, you know, that skills development and support and things like that. But our students are having really positive experiences in, in postgraduate at Notre Dame. Some of the things that set Notre Dame apart or make us unique. First up is our campuses. Uh, while we're online at the moment, we hope to be back to face to face as soon as we can. And our campuses in um, both Fremantle and Sydney are quite unique in that they are either within the town of Fremantle or in the, the CBD in Sydney. So you have all the, the shops and businesses around, you're close to public transport. So it's a really unique setting for your study. As you've seen from those bios before, you're also learning from experts. So Anne and Sean have a wealth of experience as do all of our um, academic staff. So you'll find that the content is really um, helpful for you in what you need to get your teaching qualification. There's also opportunities to progress to further study. So once you've done something like a master of teaching, if you have been maybe perhaps working for a few years and you decide that you want to pursue more study or research, there's opportunities to go further in those places. And the last point there, um, again, one of our big points of difference is the size of the uni. So Notre Dame is a small uni. Um, between our three campuses, we've got around 12,000 students. So we have smaller class sizes and you really get to know your teachers and the other students um, at our campuses. So for, our, um, for Catherine and Sarah in Sydney, um, you might have been past the campus before, um, right near Central Station and in between uh, a few other unis. So that's where we are in Broadway. And then for Fremantle, uh, for Lauren, um, again, you might have been here before, but close to Bathers Beach, the Frio train station, um, and about 30 minutes from Perth City. So um, just going back to those unique campuses, definitely um, a bit different. Um, so that's a little bit about what makes Notre Dame different, but obviously you're looking at the master of teaching. So I'm going to pass over for the next few slides to Anne and Sean, who are going to take you through education at Notre Dame. Um, yeah, so look, welcome again, and thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, I'll just pick up on a couple of points that Hannah's made and, um, you know, you can only go on your own experience um, as a student yourself and, and then working at Notre Dame. 
Um, but I think the thing that makes uh, working at Notre Dame, and I've only ever lectured at Notre Dame, you know, full time, this is my 13th year, um, is that all of my colleagues, and I could say exactly the same as in Sydney, and Sean will um, speak further to that, you know, we've all had extensive teaching experience, so everything that we do in our classes, we can sheet back to some real world experience in the classroom, and I think that's really, really important, and I think that's a major contributing factor to the fact that the School of Education uh, graduates are identified certainly locally in Perth by our principals as being their graduates of choice. We're very lucky to have a really, really uh, high reputation amongst the employing bodies. Uh, and that's borne out by surveys that are done um, across the different sectors. Um, I think the thing that does make set Notre Dame apart uh, definitely comes from the small class sizes and that feeling of community. Um, and I know that the students are an immense source of support. And even though you might be looking at a two year uh, qualification, it's amazing how quickly the students develop as a really small, tight, cohesive cohort of students um, who work really well together and provide each other with a lot of support. Um, because there is no doubt that the course is a full on course. Um, from a personal perspective, to be honest, I think it's the best road into secondary teaching uh, because you come in having a, an undergraduate degree where you have been immersed in a discipline. And I think for most secondary teachers, and certainly that was my background, um, I came into teaching because I had a passion for a learning area and I immersed myself in that passion, which for me was sports science. Um, and then I chose to do a graduate program to come into teaching following that. Um, and I think that for, a, for, a, for secondary teaching in particular, that this is a really, it's a great program. And that also spins off into the, the primary as well. I think the interaction and the, the fact that you have to become a, a master of eight different learning areas in a very, very short space of time uh, that experience that you bring with you from your academic background is really, really important in actually preparing you then to, to work um, with school. So I think for me, a Master of Teaching is a great way um, into teaching. Certainly, um, you get a wealth of um, professional experience in schools not only in the formal professional experience programs, but also in many of the other uh, courses that you do, there'll be embedded school experiences in there as well. Um, so look, I think um, Notre Dame will provide you the experience of being able to really become immersed in, in your uh, chosen field, which hopefully you pursue teaching, uh, but also to become part of a wonderful community um, and I know that in Fremantle, we have a great community. It's a wonderful place to come to work every day and I'm missing it immensely at the moment. Um, uh, so we work with students. You have a program coordinator who will work with you and we try and support you um, because we understand that people come to university with a life. Uh, and sometimes life has to take over for a short space of time. So you will always have that one-on-one -on -one relationship that enables you to have a program coordinator to, that, that you can talk things through. Um, and I, I think you'll find that that capacity to be able to go in and out of different lecturers offices and, and catch up with them and maybe catch up for a coffee from time to time will really make the Notre Dame experience very different to an experience you've had at another institution. I'm gonna hand over to Sean and, and uh, see from your perspective, Sean, what, what you might want to add. Yeah, yeah. So welcome, everyone. And I see that you're all interested in primary school teaching. So it's fantastic that you've got Anne and I, who are both secondary school teachers or former secondary school teachers here to, uh, to welcome you into the MTeach programs. But I do teach across both, uh, both programs. And as Anne mentioned, you have a program coordinator who handles, um, on, on the Sydney campus anyway, for Catherine and Sarah, who handles both programs. So I'm the program coordinator for both the MTeach primary and MTeach secondary. And what I would say is uh, really just um, reflecting on everything that Anne said, um, even though we work on two separate campuses, it, it's, it's so heartening to hear how similar the two campuses are, such a welcoming community, 
a great place to work, um, what I consider to be um, a great place to study. You know, I went to big universities, both in the US and when I got to Australia, I was part of big universities. And I, I really, um, I'm always, uh, I don't wanna say surprised, but it does surprise me how, how community oriented our, our programs and our campuses are. And specifically between postgrad and undergrad, because the postgrads for us are usually there in the evenings and or on weekends. So we try to um, structure our programs around full time or daytime work. Um, so you really get this kind of, it's a bit of a separation between the undergrad and postgrad, but because our postgrad cohorts are small, it really builds its own little community and the support systems are incredible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I promise it's not coronavirus. <clears throat> I just have something stuck in my throat. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, so, um, and because we have, uh, as Ann mentioned, small class sizes, you really get to know your cohort and the support that you receive from each other and from staff is really something that's special about Notre Dame. As Hannah mentioned, we are squeezed between two tremendous universities here in Sydney, Sydney Uni up the street, UTS right across the street, each with, each with between 55 and 65,000 students. And then you have Notre Dame in the middle. So Notre Dame Sydney only has about four and a half thousand students. Combined campuses, as Hannah mentioned, is about 12,000. So it really is a completely different experience. I don't know where you have done your undergrad degrees, um, but I, I, I thank you for coming to explore our university. And I know that if you come, you'll be you'll be welcomed and you'll you'll love your programs. Um, yes, yeah, so I probably will um, miss it and uh, won't talk about the <laughs> the secondary program thing as that's really not of interest to you. And uh, so um, with the Master of Teaching Primary at Fremantle, it's a two year course. Um, and we do have a mid-year intake, so we are taking students in for a second semester start. Now, obviously, coming into primary teaching, you very quickly have to get your head around all of the eight different learning areas. And if you are wanting to gain accreditation to teach in a Catholic primary school, you've got to get your head around nine learning areas. Um, so the course is very much devoted to providing you with opportunities to develop. We have a strong emphasis on literacy and numeracy, as, in, as you'd be very well aware from uh, media talk about students in literacy and numeracy. So there's a very, very strong emphasis on our program um, on literacy and numeracy, but you will also do courses that pick up the other learning areas as well. Um, so once you have completed the program, um, you then are able to get registered to teach. Um, during our program, we have 20 weeks of classroom experience. So you do a 10 week experience um, in generally school term two, and then you'll do an internship at the in your second year. That's generally in school term three, but students do get out of sync every now and then. So we do have um, students doing an internship, you know, at all times of the year. Uh, as it's a graduate entry program, you have to have completed a bachelor's degree. Um, and even if you're about to complete, don't feel that you can't apply. Uh, we just can't make an offer until we've got um, uh, acknowledgement that your degree's been completed. Um, I'm guessing, and I am hope I'm not making a wrong assumption, but uh, you haven't come from overseas, that, uh, judging by your accents. Uh, so, you know, there's no, no need for you to um, uh, complete a, an English language sort of proficiency test. Um, do be aware that um, federal requirements or, or national requirements uh, mean that you will need to complete a literacy and numeracy test at some point during your course. We, we recommend that it's done in the first year. Uh, that's a graduation requirement and it has been, uh, it's an externally um, imposed requirement, um, but it, it is needed for registration. So that would be an additional um, requirement that you complete that test. But certainly once you start the course, we give you lots of details about that. And we also have some support materials 
if you feel your literacy and numeracy is not, um, you, you might need to upskill a little bit. Um, it can be done part time. You'll find that most of the courses will run during sort of what we might sort of loosely term business hours. Um, and so, as I said, as once you've um, completed the program, uh, you are then welcome to apply for registration. I think that's probably it, Hannah, um, and I'm happy to answer questions later. Um, do you think, do you want me to go through, I'm happy to be <laughs> guided by the audience about the secondary program. If you're not interested in the secondary program, if you're sitting on the fence, I'm happy to go through it. Um, what do you think, Hannah? I guess for Fremantle, it would just be um, Lauren. So mm. if you, um, if, are you looking at secondary at all or you know it's primary you want? Um, I, I'm pretty set on primary at the moment. Yeah. So Anne, we'll leave the secondary yeah. part there. And then um, if anyone is listening to our recording at a later time, they can read our slide and get in contact with some more questions. Yeah. So I will flick through then into um, Sydney's programs. Right. So hello. Um, so about our Master of Teaching primary, I guess, what um, building on what I said before, it is um, uh, an after hours program. So most of our courses run um, after 5 p.m. So between kind of 5.30 and 8.30 You'd expect to be there if you wanted to do it full time about four nights a week. So four courses would make it full time. What makes our program stand out as opposed to others is while it's a, a two year full time equivalent program, you complete the program in 18 months. So it's offered in intensive mode. Um, that's the only offering we have. We also offer it in part time. So what we would encourage you to do is to do um, a 50% load if you decided to go part time. That way you could finish full-time in 18 months or part-time in three years. <clears throat> a little bit different to the Fremantle program. Our program offers 14 weeks of professional experience. And again, that's for the career changes. So for people who are working full-time, our thinking there was that um, you could take your four weeks of annual leave to do your four-week placement in year one. And then as you... Um, near the end of the program, if you're looking to make that career transition straight away, you then leave your job to do the 10 week placement in year two and transition directly into the profession. So those placements take place in the first year in school term three and in second year in school term two. So it's at the completion of school term two, right around July, mid July, where you complete the program. Um, Similar to the free mental program, of course, you're getting, um, uh, you're getting courses in all KLAs across the pr primary program with a focus, similar to Fremantle again, on literacy and numeracy, since that is a, a national priority area. Um, as Anne mentioned, the land type, so that's the literacy and numeracy test for initial teacher education is a national requirement. So the same sort of testing that Anne talked about for Fremantle is required for Sydney. You do take that once you start. We also encourage you to take that in your first year. But if you don't think you're ready for it in your first year, you can wait until the second year and use some of our support materials. And we also have courses that are offered at the university for support in literacy and numeracy. What else? It's a Commonwealth supported place. Um, so, similar, so it'll cost you the same to do a Master of Teaching program at our university, whether it's on the Fremantle or Sydney campus, as it will at any campus in Australia. You do need a, an undergrad degree in order to start the program. So again, as Anne said, even if you're just nearing completion, that's fine. We don't offer a mid-year intake. So our intakes are only at the beginning of the year. So you would start in January. Uh, and that's because we run it in intensive mode. So we run our uh, semesters, let's say, in line with school terms. So we run um, kind of two semesters in one in, in, in your first year. So semester one in your first year split between school term one and school term two, where you do four courses in each one of those. So it's quite intensive to start and then slows down with your professional experience in school term three. And then uh, halfway through school term three into school term four, you do your kind of third semester during your first year. And then uh, school term one in your second year, 
is another four courses. And then school term two is your final internship. So I know that's a lot of information. I don't necessarily expect you to memorize all that, but I wanted to give you an idea as to how the full-time versus part-time works and how you do finish a two-year full-time equivalent program in 18 months. Um, is there anything I did not cover? I don't think so. I'm gonna, we're gonna take questions in a few minutes anyway. So if there is something that you're, you're yearning to ask, just hang on a few minutes and we'll get there. Thanks, Anna. <clears throat> and um, Sarah or Catherine, either of you on the fence about pri uh, primary or secondary, would you like us to go through secondary? You can just shake your head if or nod it, whatever is easiest. <laughs> No, no, okay, beautiful. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll leave that one then. Okay, so um, I'll just quickly cover a bit about the application process for Notre Dame. So you've already heard um, from Sean and Anne about the intake. So uh, if you're thinking of semester two, we can offer that at the Fremantle campus. You would need to apply um, ASAP for that. Or if you're looking for semester one, um, we'll have that at both of the campuses. You can really apply any time from now, but we suggest sort of by the end of November is best to submit your application. The application is all online. Um, so you apply through our website and there's no fee to apply. So there's no cost to do so. You'd need to upload your academic transcript from your um, previous study and then any additional documentation. We usually recommend things like a resume, um, references, if you've won any awards, certificates, those sorts of things, you can add those as well. Once you've submitted your application, it will be reviewed by the admissions team and often the School of Education and they will let you know if there's any other documents that they need to proceed. And then if you are successful, you will receive your offer via email and you can accept that online. So we're all online now with our application process. Um, at any point throughout that process, if there's any questions, you can contact our admissions office or the prospective students office and we'll be able to help with that. Um, Anne or Sean, any other comments on that application process? Any particular things that you like to see in the applications? If I um, could, Hannah. Yeah. Just, oh, sorry, go ahead, Anne. Oh, no, you go, Sean. I've been going first. <laughs> okay, so just with Sydney, because we do start, um, because our, our program runs in school terms, we start uh, semester one right after Australia Day, so around January 27th, 28th. So I would encourage you to get the applications in earlier than the end of November, only because if you get it in in November, you know, a couple of weeks of processing and then your interview, which will likely be online, we're getting into the Christmas break and then we're already in January and, you know, your courses, um, you know, you get those course materials about two weeks before the courses start. So we're kind of into the, the second week of January already. So if you can get them in a little bit earlier, it just helps you be prepared um, you'll have your offer sooner. You'll know what courses you're taking. It'll give you time to um, enroll, get the information you need, and be prepared to start those courses by the end of January. So while normal enrollments or, or normal, I shouldn't say normal, the university calendar usually shows semester one starting toward the end of February. Our MTeach program started at the end of January. So getting that ball rolling faster or sooner rather is, uh, is beneficial. Thanks, Anna. Um, yeah, Hannah, I was just going to add that you know, part of that application, um, and I think I'm speaking the same for Sydney here, um, is there's a, a, a series of questions that we ask the students to address that sort of, um, I guess it's a, something similar to a personal statement. Um, and I would just sort of counsel applicants to really think about what you write, because I know when we get we re review the applications, I always make a point of reading the responses to those questions. Um, so it's not uh, so if you are going to apply, and I really would encourage you to apply um, with us. Um, think about those responses to those questions, because I think they are they give us a really really good insight um, into you as a person and as a, as a potential teacher. Thanks, Hannah. No problem. Um, so that's actually all of our slides. I'll, um, 
this is just the contact details for the prospective students offices in Sydney and Frio. So um, if there are any questions at a later point, feel free to email the prospective students offices. If we can't help you with your question, we can obviously put you in contact with um, a specific contact in the School of Education. Um